Today on With the First Pick, we're taking the training wheels off, Rick, and we're doing a two-round mock draft, all 64 picks. I'm Ryan Wilson. That's Rick Spielman. This is episode 124. And Rick, how many days to the 2024 NFL draft? Uh, Mr. Wilson, there are 63 days until the 2024 NFL draft where you as the GM of this podcast and me just a scout in the corner, I get to watch to see what you actually do on draft day and uh, the selections that you're going to make. Yeah, everything's coming full circle. I was just telling you before the podcast, back in the, in the fall, you had the grand proclamation on this podcast, and Debo had the foresight to, to put it on social media that Caleb Williams was one of the best prospects you'd seen since Andrew Luck. And, you know, people had some opinions about that. We just saw the Joel Klatt, who does color for Fox with Gus Johnson, said something similar. He tweeted that out, and people are coming at him like they came at you, Rick. Maybe there's something to that. Well, we will see. We'll find out together. Uh, by the way, info combines next week, Rick. And with the first pick, uh, Rick, that's the podcast you and I do together. <laughs> we'll be live. Know, been, yeah. And all my side jobs, I have been advertising it to death, especially going into the combine. That's what you got to do. You got to shake your moneymaker <laughs> if you want to get somewhere. We'll be at Indy uh, next week for the combine and we'll be live every day, Tuesday through Friday. We'll be live on HQ every single day. So check that out. And by the way, if you missed it, Rick, you and I were joined by Mike Renner of Renner Ranks Podcast on Tuesday to preview some of our favorite players heading to the Combine. You were on your best behavior. I appreciate that. Uh, and I got, a, I got a question for you before we get started here with this two-round mock draft. Okay, uh, wait. First, first. Yeah, go ahead. How did I miss it? I was actually there. And when we had company come on our <laughs> show, of course I would have known. I didn't miss it. I was actually part of the show. That's true. I was actually speaking to our, our listeners and viewers, but I, I thought I'd throw you in there just in case you, you had spaced out for a few moments. And I want to ask you a question here, and, and this question is going to blow your mind because I, as I was thinking about it, I was I couldn't help but not laugh. Uh, what would you have said if back in, say, December 2021, when you were still the Vikings general manager, you didn't know me, I introduced myself to you and I said, Mr. Spillman, uh, 26 months from now, you and I will be doing a two-round mock draft on YouTube with some guy named Debo. What what would you imagine your answer would have been at the time as you were trying to win football games for the Minnesota Vikings? I don't know. That that would have been a little bizarre. I mean, security. I've of, yeah, there was a lot of people that come up to me at the combine looking for jobs and that's true, uh, yeah. young folks. That, that's you'd be just another one of those fine young men that come up. <laughs> I was thinking this guy probably is looking for a job, but. He knows something that I don't know. Maybe he knows the owner and knowing I'm going to get blown the hell out of Minnesota <laughs> and be doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah, but all the way to YouTube? I mean, what would you have had to have done for that to have happened? I didn't even know what YouTube was back then. I thought you, you had some kind of video thing. <laughs> and here you are stuck with me and Debo. But hey, <laughs> you, you, you seem to like it. Could be I worse. love it. Yeah, it could be worse. I, I could uh, be actually trying to yeah, make a decision with the uh, Chicago Bears on what they're going to do with quarterback. I was going to ask you, so you're still not taking AGM jobs? Is that confirmed? Uh, is this very much confirmed. Uh, right. We'll see. We'll be playing this back when you take a job. All right. Yeah, <laughs> All right, let's I get to it, Rick. Two years. I'm not going to take one now. Um, can I live in the house if you leave? Can I live in the, in, the, in the island house if you have to go take a job? Yeah, you can be our company. I'll be the company. There you go. Uh, <laughs> does, Steve does, got does people not understand that term? I think it's a, an old people's term. So that's why I brought it up last week and you just, our last episode, and you, you weren't very cooperative. All right, Debo's got things to do. So he's brought up the mock draft uh, database simulator because <laughs> we're going to go through these two rounds here real quick. One more thing before we go. I don't know if I've said this to you, Rick. Do you know how many people Debo has married? He He's quite popular in terms of marrying his friends and, and family members. Do you know how many? He's going to do a wedding this weekend. Do you know what number wedding that will be for him? No, I have no idea. And Debo's a man of many talents. And, you know, he's the guy behind the window of this podcast and knows what the hell he's doing back there. But he gets the show going all the time. But I did not. I knew that he was marrying people. I didn't know you can do a mail in, uh, <laughs> take a 50 questionnaire and all of a sudden you're a minister to yeah. officiate weddings. Uh, I have three weddings coming up two this summer and one in the fall that um, my nieces are all getting married. Oh, nice. So uh, I'm looking at it more as how much it's going to cost me to get everybody there, the hotel rooms, the flights, the rental car, the gifts. It just, it's yeah. nonstop. But if I would have known Debo. Could have saved a few bucks. I could have saved a few bucks. Debo, do we get a, a, a discount from you for weddings? If Since 
we're on the podcast and you're our boss? Of course, anyone you know, if you need those vows renewed, I'm, I'm capable of that. <laughs> Jeez, can you imagine? <laughs> this is this this is couple number you know six what? coming up. We should have a bet, and whoever loses the bet has to have their wife on the podcast, and we have to renew our vows on the air. <laughs> oh, God. I, since I lose every bet, that doesn't sound like a good proposition for me unless I get into some sort of trouble and I need to review. As our buddy Pete Prisco says, when you bring home flowers, you probably did something you shouldn't have done. When you start <laughs> renewing your vows, you don't know what you got into. All right, we'll we'll table that. Let's get to it. Debo has to prepare. He's got to put on his, his outfit as they can do the rehearsal a little bit here. All right, first up, I have odd number picks. You have even number picks doing all 64 picks. I thought I had odd number picks. Let me check the email, Rick. God forbid. Rick, that, Rick is odd. Ryan is even. Oh, you're right. Okay, my bad. So you get to pick first. Uh, I was going to say quickly. Also, if you're a Panthers fan or a Browns fan, good news. Your team gets to pick today because we're going to go through all two rounds. All right, Rick. I didn't read the instructions. You're odd, which which makes sense. I don't know why I didn't realize that you are, in fact, odd. I'm even. Go ahead, Mr. Odd Man. What are you doing? Yep. Yeah. No. Uh, with the first pick, the Chicago Bears are going to take Caleb Williams. Oh, terrible idea. Terrible. Okay. Next up, Washington is going to take Jaden Daniels. Oh, I'm not complicating it, Rick. Okay. I'm going to go with the New England Patriots and going to take Drake May. All right. This is pretty much chalk, as the kids say. Next up, Arizona Cardinals, Marvin. I mean, this <laughs> we could have put this on autopilot, I think, at this point. Marvin Harrison going to the Arizona Cardinals. Yay, Kyler Murray. Next up, the L.A. Chargers. Now things seem mm. very interesting. And by the way, let me just preface this by saying a couple things. Uh, when I've done these mock drafts in the past for the website, I've no noted that even if you're a top five, top ten talent as a tight end, typically you get drafted after pick 19. There are a few exceptions, of course. Kyle Pitts being one of them. Uh, and Jer Daniel Jeremiah of NFL Network made this point yesterday on, on his podcast. People were tweeting it out, and I thought it was a good one. Uh, the salary cap implications in, in terms of what you're paying these tight ends compared to the franchise tag, you're overpaying for them if you give them a top five contract, a top 10 contract, whereas the wide receivers, it's actually a bargain given that their franchise tag is closer to 20 million. I thought that was an interesting point as well. So putting that out there before you inevitably take Brock Powers. <laughs> How do you know? I'm changing it up today. All right. What are you doing? I am going to take uh, knowing uh, Allen and Williams are both older. Uh, Williams is coming off an ACL. Oh, no. Don't take him. Uh, Quinton Johnston the, did not pan out last year. Not yet. I, I need playmakers, and I'm going to have to make some salary cap room to get some of those guys. I, can't I know what the Giants thing. are going to want at the next pick, so I'm going to go with Malik Neighbors. Ah! <laughs> I was going to take him with the Giants, too. You jerk. All right, that's a great pick. All right, well done. Well done, you, sir. You have some experience, apparently, in drafting players. Golly, Debo. All right, Olaf Ashenu. It's a great pick, but I don't want it right here. Uh, all right, Tennessee Titans on the board. Man, this is a good case, best case scenario for, for them as well, it feels like. Yep, uh, I'm going to go with the uh, tackle with the biggest upside, uh, so I'm going to go with Fashanu. No, what, what are we doing for the Giants? Giants are taking Fashanu. Sorry, I thought you were taking uh, Odunze. No, no, Fashanu. Sorry, I said I didn't want to take him here, but he—I mean—he's a good pick. I took Fashanu there. Sorry. Oh my God! Did I did I go out or something? You guys didn't hear me? No, no, it didn't go out. It's just your bizarro <laughs> picks again. So, <laughs> oh, I'm not taking Odunze. It's sick. I love Odunze, but they—I mean, Daniel Jones won't stand a chance if they take just Odunze here. We got two rounds, too, baby. All right. Okay, so I'm up, Debo. Yes, I, you can't yeah. draft Olu. So this is a no-brainer. Uh, Joe Alt all the way. Yeah, uh, huge need for them. All right, next up, the Atlanta Falcons. So I went back and we rewatched all his sacks yesterday because uh, we did a Florida State segment with with BMAC on HQ, and um, I think Jared Verse is going to be my edge one. So I'm taking Jared Verse here. Is that crazy, Rick? Jared versus nope. Edge, Edge one? Nope. Definitely like that one. Okay. All right. Nine, you are up. So you took Caleb at number one. The Bears are back on the clock. I can still get receivers. I can't get pass rushers. So I have to go with Dallas Turner here. I don't hate it. All right. So the Jets here. I could go 
wide receiver, and I would love a Dunze here, but the word on the street coming out of the Senior Bowl was that Joe Douglas GM loves Talisi Fuaga, so I'm going to take Fuaga here, the uh, offensive lineman out of Oregon State. And oh. uh, Is that too rich for you? You okay with that? A little rich for me, but it's a definite need they need to fill, and he's a first-round talent, so I just think it's a little rich, but the two tackles just got off the board, so you're not going to keep uh, – Aaron Rodgers upright if you don't protect him. Now, he's a be way better run blocker. And I think he's got a ways to go as a pass protector, but he's big and he's athletic enough to be a starting right tackle for him. I don't know if you solved the left tackle issue, um, but you got to tackle. All right, before we get to pick 11, where 26 months ago Rick was a GM and didn't know he would be on the show with us on YouTube, <laughs> we're going to take a quick break. And we come and back. all social platforms, social media platforms. <laughs> Oh, he's good at this, Devo. All right, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll hear what Rick says about the Vikings at 11. We need your sports news anywhere. We've got breaking news to bring you. Then get your sports anytime you want them. Big trade news overnight to discuss. Because we know you need sports all the time. A lot of movement in the rankings this week. A legend adds to their legacy. We're bringing you that breaking news right here on HQ. CBS Sports HQ, anywhere, anytime, all the time. All right, Rick. Minnesota Vikings are up. They need a quarterback pre-free agency, but they need some other things too. What are you doing? I have to go defense here, so I'm struggling between taking a corner or taking the pass rusher. So under the assumption known that Daniil Hunter may more than likely be gone, DJ Wanham, Davenport, they need edge rushers. If he passes a physical, so on this podcast, we're assuming that he is A-plus physical-wise, I got to take Latu. Okay. Our buddy Pete Prisco texted me and said he likes the idea of the Bears signing to Neil Hunter, which would allow them to do some some fun things with the first and nine picture to get to that. Uh, so we'll see. Denver's up at number 12. Sean Payton's never had a rookie quarterback that he's had much faith in, so I don't know if he's going to do that here. So you took a lot to? You're not worried about the injuries? I said, assuming okay. that he passes all physical. Sorry, I was looking. I was looking up something, and I, I as soon as the, the words left my mouth, I knew. It, I, I, okay, relax. <laughs> that, that might be the most. You know, he's always a little prickly with you. That might be the most he's ever raised his voice at you. <laughs> I I knew as soon as I said it because I, 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 I. Damn it! I said he was completely healthy. <laughs> I was looking something up, Rick. Good lord! All right, um, you know what? Take this, Rick Quinion Mitchell at twelve. I'm going to put him with Patrick Sertan. Um, we get lose use some interior defensive line help here. Maybe I could have gone with with um, Byron or, or Johnny, but I'm going to go with Quinn Mitchell at 12. No quarterback. 13, the Vegas, Las Vegas Raiders are up. I am, do it? You going to do it? I am going to do it. Oh, man. Uh, I am going to take J.J. McCarthy at number 13 as their future quarterback. Okay. So I asked you this before last week uh, on Tuesday, I believe, but you just going to throw the job out there, or is Aiden O'Connell your guy at first? I think there'll be competition to start, okay. but knowing that uh, J.J. is going to be your guy. All right, at 14, I'm taking Byron Murphy the second. I love Brian Brzee. The edge guys have gone off the board. Pair him with Byron Murphy, and now we're cooking with gas. How do you feel about that? Uh, I feel okay about that. All right, I'll take that. Okay is a A plus in my book. <laughs> the Colts yeah. are up next at 15. Yeah, this is a no brainer. They got to take the uh, top corner in the draft. So uh, I'm going to go with Terry on Arnold for this okay. pick. And just to reiterate, I think you said Quinion is your 1B right now. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So not a huge difference, but you look Terry a little better. All right. 16, the Seattle Seahawks are on the board. Uh, I'm going with Johnny Newton, the other interior. Defensive lineman who had a really good season could end up being defensive lineman number one, but I think it'll be close. They're both twitched up. Byron had a great season, so did Johnny. So Seattle takes um, Johnny Newton. So oh, that's Jerzon Newton. I looked up how to pronounce his first name. <laughs> Rick got his hands on the pronunciation guide, so he's pretty pumped about that. Yeah, Next I'm up, excited. I may be able to do names actually on this podcast. <laughs> Next up, the Jacksonville Jaguars at 17. Where are you going? Oh, boy. Um, uh, I have to go. I can't believe Roma Dunze is still on the board. Oh so, gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I, you know, Ridley, we're not going to sign back. They need playmakers around Trevor Lawrence. I can't. Let me ask you, Ridley's too expensive. Is that why you're not going to sign him? Who? Ridley's no, too expensive. 
No, because of the draft compensation, if you sign him, look at oh, you're going to be giving up a second or third round pick. I think I don't know all the details off the top of my head, but gotcha. it comes to the draft compensation they signed okay. before free agency. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go Roma Dunze's falling. I don't know why he's falling, but he fell in this one. How can you pass him up? Well, there's a run on tackles and edge rushers and interior defensive linemen and cornerbacks. But yeah, I take your point. All right. This is a match made in heaven, and this – I don't even think this is overdrafting him. This is about the spot he probably should go off the board, even though he is a top-five talent. I think you agree with that, Rick. Tight end Brock Bowers is going to the Bengals, baby. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. So The Rams are up at 19. They haven't okay. had a first-round pick, I don't think, since Sean McVay came to L.A. Here's This is going to be – hold your seat on this one. Uh, and I think I read this morning that they let go of Allen, their starting center. That's right. So I'm going uh, with, keep going down, Jackson Powers Johnson. That's a great pick. Great pick. Man, you're pretty good at this. Jackson Powers Johnson. Oh, Lordy T. Mercy. All right. Steelers are in a predicament here. My guy, Michael Penix Jr. is there. They need offensive line help. They need defensive line help. They need edge help. They need cornerback help. Oh, my gosh. Debo, go to the offensive tackles. I don't think I'm going to take a quarterback here. I don't know what that solution is, a quarterback. You're not taking Spencer Rattler? <laughs> we got two rounds, buddy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take, fingers crossed he stays healthy, a Marius Mims. So we got a Marius Mims, and then we have Broderick Jones. And then we're in Arthur, Arthur Smith's offense. So Okay. I don't know who the quarterback is, and it pains me not to take Michael Penix Jr. I'm not. I, I'm mad at myself for not doing it. He's going to be a Hall of Famer, just like uh, Caleb is. Okay, Marius Mims off the board. The Miami Dolphins are on the clock. Rick at number twenty-one. Yeah, uh, I can go offensive tackle here very easily, uh, I, and I think uh, J.C. Latham. You know, I don't think he's a left tackle. I think he's a right tackle. Can Austin Jackson maybe flip over? I don't know what Armstead, if he's going to play or not play. So I have to go with the best offensive lineman on the board. I'm going to go with J.C. Latham, although I was looking at Fatanu too, sliding inside a guard or center. Um, that makes me feel a bigger need, but Latham is, is higher on the board. Okay. I get it. I get it. Next up. Philadelphia Eagles. I will not be taking a receiver here after you and Debo yelled at me about that. So I'm going to take, I love Nate Wiggins. I'm taking Cooper regime because of his versatility here. You can move him around. Uh, he'll play corner. I don't know if it will be asked to return uh, in, in Philly. He can do that, but he, he has a perhaps a future safety as well. So Cooper regime 22 next up Houston Texans at 23. Boy, um, they can use corner help. Um, it's not a big need for them. They can use pass rush help, but I think this kid has potential star written all over him. I'm going to give CJ Stroud another weapon. I'm going to go with Brian Thomas Jr. I knew it. That's a great pick. I love it. Home run hitter. I mean, for what he did to Nico Collins, Brian Thomas Jr. might end up being Marvin Harrison 2.0 in that offense. All right, the Dallas Cowboys are up. All right. I'm trying to think. Offensive line is probably at the top of the list. Uh, all right, I'm not going to overthink it. Give me Fatano, Troy Fatano out of Washington. What are you talking about? He's going to mean? Dallas. Huh? Troy Fatano is going to Dallas from Washington. He's, he's a Husker. Yeah, right. From Washington. He's going to Dallas. That's right. A uh, 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 Husky going to the Cowboys. Okay. You confuse me. Yeah. I was just noting his college before um, getting his protein. That's, that's not how this is supposed to go. <laughs> 25, the Green Bay Packers in the NFC North. Rick her up. Boy, I can go offensive line here as easy as I can go defense, but they need corner help. They traded Douglas to Phil or to Buffalo. Uh, I am going to go with Nate Wiggins here to make it Okay, happen. that feels like a bargain. Uh, do you like Nate Wiggins coming out better than you liked Eric Stokes out of Georgia? I didn't love Eric Stokes coming out. He was injured last year for much last year, but he's a better athlete. 
Yeah. Yeah, I do. You like Nate better? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, because I know he got some push. Uh, Eric did late in the process, and obviously he was a first-round pick. Okay, next up, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm assuming the quarterback's coming back. How about – oh, this is easy. I mentioned that I went back and watched some of the Florida State kids. Went back and watched Keon Coleman. What? Why are we down on Keon Coleman? I, I, who's down on Keon Coleman? I thought I just, people were talking. I only I could watch him. This guy's dominating. He only had two drops all year. They both came in this last game against Louisville, and they're both pretty tough passes. I love Keon Coleman. Give me Keon Coleman here at 28. We'll see what happens with Mike Evans. But um, he's a really good player. Okay. Arizona Cardinals up at 27, Rick. Yeah, I have to go defense here. They need corner help big time. So uh, this is a no-brainer for me. Kool-Aid. Marvin and Kool-Aid. That's a pretty good haul. Does Kool-Aid need to run sub four five five to be I a first round? Well, I okay. think he's smoother than you know, and sometimes these guys that look so smooth on tape, you may not think they run. I think he's going to run well enough. Is he going to be a four three guy? No, I think he'll be high four fours uh, when it's said and done. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let me see the wide receivers quick, Debo, to see which ones, because we're, we're burning through these wide receivers. Let's see what we've got left. Oh, my God. What do you mean, oh, my God? It, you got to be on top of this. You got to keep track oh. of what's going on. Oh, I see. Well, I'm not I'm not cut out to be a – I'm a YouTube star. I'm not a, an actual GM. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, give me the uh, the edge rushers too, Debo. <sighs> <laughs> oh, you know what I'm doing? It's done. Chop Robinson, done. There you go. Okay. I'm taking chop. I'm not taking a wide receiver here. I know that's what some Bills fans want, but we burn through the wide receivers. I'm making your team better. I'm taking chop. Okay. Detroit Lions. Who? Uh, are you ready for this one? Oh boy. You're not taking another quarterback, are you? You got him and Hooker on the roster. Nope. Nope. I am going to take. They need. Pass rush help. I, I could go offensive line here, but I'm not going to do it. They don't have. They need guard help. I can get that swinging back through. I'm going to go with Braylon to go with uh, Hutchinson and have two guys humming off the edge. Braylon Trice, love it. All right, next up, Baltimore Ravens again. Uh, I mean, I get the wide receiver help, but uh, offensive line wise, let's see. We're at the Tyler Guyton part of the conversation. I like Tyler Guyton better than you do. Everyone else is gone. Jordan Morgan's still there. Jordan Morgan's coming off that ACL. You know what? Jordan Morgan had a really good senior bowl, had a really good season. I'm taking Jordan Morgan here. Perfect. Would you say perfect? Yeah, he fell right into my hands. <laughs> All right, the 49ers <laughs> are up. Tyler hey, Guyton. Before, before you make your pick, Rick, let me ask you this, because I think you were – I don't know if you're on HQ talking about this, but what do you think about the the storyline that our buddies Brady Quinn and Lee J. Deusel are pushing that Kirk Cousins should sign with the 49ers? I don't know. It's, hey, more power to whoever, wherever he goes. I'm very excited for him. Can you get a second round pick for Brock Purdy in a trade? I think so. I yeah. do too. Okay. I just want to put that out there since they're doing the 49ers. What do you Why would you get rid of a young guy and trade him for I a would. second rounder? So. I wouldn't do it either, but I got you to the Super Bowl if I'm not mistaken. Last time I looked, correct, and that, he's not the reason they lost. No. Okay. All right. This is another no-brainer. You screwed that pick up in front of me, so we're high-fiving in my draft room. Uh, I'm going with they need right tackle help in a big way. Tyler Guyton is the most upside out of any of the tackles. This is an easy pick. Go with Guyton. Oh, you like Guyton better than Patrick Paul. That's the guy that you, you're not. I like Guyton better than Morgan, the guy you just took. I mean, we're I like Morgan fans. because I thought he, I think uh, Tyler Anchor's better right now, but Morgan's coming off the ACL. I think he has a chance to get stronger. He's an athlete, yada, yada, yada. All right, next up. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this brings back flashbacks for Debo, Nelson Aguilar versus, I mean, uh, Jalen Rager versus Justin Jefferson when you guys were high five and, and uh, Debo we was We were high five and we got lucky. We had the video. People of you. are going to feel the same way about an offensive tackle, but I, I get the point. <laughs> Thank you, and I think we have D, uh, video Debo of Rick being extremely excited because it was the COVID year when they got Justin Jefferson. So 
Yeah, Call it what you want. He didn't know right? me, but he sent me a text and it just said, F you, Debo. <laughs> yeah. No, I did it because I knew, according to Ryan, that I was going to be on this podcast a couple of years after I picked uh, Justin Jefferson. That you got me a, fired. <laughs> can you imagine that? You just picked Justin Jefferson, the best player of the draft. You will be doing a YouTube show in less than two years. All right, Kansas City's up. Offensive line help us another knee, but uh, you know what? But a nothing. I'm taking Graham Barton. Oh. Look at that face. Look at that face. Gotcha, Rick. Graham Barton's going to the Chiefs, baby. He can play <laughs> Guard, good. he can play center. Okay. Do they need help at center? Creed Humphreys is a pretty good player. No, but they need help at guard. Uh Smith, is he up? Smith no, not Smith, but guard. the other one. Um Cooney, he's pretty, he's all pro guard. He's been injured. Okay. <laughs> all right, maybe we'll have Graham Barton play tackle. <laughs> oh, it's a bizarro land to me. Uh here's the other thing we'll do with Graham Barton. He'll snap the ball. Uh, on the third downs because he's because Creed struggled to snap. So that's look at that. I'm thinking ahead outside the box, Rick. There go defense. There's it's it's a no brainer. I may have gotten ahead of myself on that pick. I'll be honest. Yeah, with you. you did. You <laughs> did. But you very much got over your ski tips. <laughs> <laughs> I am tumbling down the mountain out of control. Heads up. All right, we'll take a quick break when we come back. Carolina Panthers. They're going to make a pick, and Rick's going to make it right after this. The madness doesn't just happen. Yo, get ready! And although it's marked on our calendars each year, it's built by moments of mayhem before. And the crowd goes crazy! And it begins to bubble long before it bursts. Sure, madness and March may go hand in hand, but it starts right here. Yeah, old, I forgot about Joe Tooney. I was thinking about Nick Allegretti. <laughs> and uh, all right, I might be getting fired, Rick. I might be coming back on the podcast with you. I have hey, to make I'm sitting next to the owner, Debo, in the corner, just saying, what What are we doing with our lives right now? What how, much, how much is that guy making a year again? <laughs> all right, Rick, you have the great honor of selecting the first pick for the Carolina Panthers at pick 33. Okay. Uh I am a big fan of this player. It's definitely has to be a receiver. I'm not as big a Troy Franklin fan as most people are. Uh, I am a, a, a big fan of Adania Mitchell. Adane Mitchell. Yeah. I'm going to go with Mitchell here. I thought you were going to take my guy Lad here, which I would have loved. It would have been close. Oh, okay. That's good. All right. So the pan uh, excuse me, the Patriots are up. Drake May. Was number three overall. I feel like we need some offensive line help here. Let me double check and see what's available because we're getting not slim pickings, but we're getting a little further down. Uh, so can guy is there a guy that can come in right away and start, Rick? Can Christian Jones do that? Can can Patrick Paul do that, or is that too rich for you? Oh my God, what are you talking about? That's way too rich. Hey, I mean, we need offensive line help. I'm just saying. All right. Instead, I can't wait till this picker. Go ahead. I know what I'm doing. Okay. I'm taking. Xavier Worthy, wide receiver out of Texas. What are you, <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> oh, God, I wish we was, I was in a real draft with you. <laughs> what is wrong with this pick? What's wrong with Xavier Worthy here? We need wide receivers. The wide receivers are not very good. I'm not overdrafting an offensive lineman. Okay. <clears throat> what would you have done here? Uh, I, hey, I'm I'm just scouting the corner. I'm just, <laughs> laughing at the at the GM trying to get him fired. <laughs> All right, make a note, Debo. I I bet Xavier Worthy has a better rookie season than who'd you just take, Adonai Mitchell? You gonna make I'll that bet in a heartbeat? Yes, give me a uh, dollar on that, Debo. Receiving uh, yards is that the metric we want? Yeah, do? what do you want to what do you want to measure by? Whatever you want to make it, it doesn't matter. Catches, receiving yards, run after catch. <laughs> all right whatever metric you think it gives me the best chance to win Debo use that metric because Rick is feeling himself right now all right Rick is in no mood fellas all right Marvin Harrison Jr. Kool-Aid McKinstry first two picks of the Arizona Cardinals you are up at pick 35 I got I got to get defense I got McKinstry the last one um uh, all my pass rushers can you put up the pass rushers Debo Oh, somebody's not prepared. Interesting. Edge. Well, I, I, you're you're throwing me way off my game. The edge rushers, Debo. <laughs> that's the button that says edge. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Darius Robinson. Number. I. That's. I'm running the card. Almost pulled a hamstring. How fast? <laughs> I <thought my> <laughs> uh, just to circle back. What? What? Are you down in Xavier Worthy? No, he's just skinny and runs fast and has some drops. But other than that, he's fine. 
All right. Well, I went back and watched them, and I think that you are going to be very sadly mistaken when it's time to pay the piper. I'll be. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That's a pretty good haul. You got Demarius uh, uh, Robinson. All right. Jaden Daniels, number two overall, number 36. All right. Offensive line. Um, Go to interior offensive line, Debo. Card center. Uh, Cause I think let me double check my, my master list here, Rick, cause I got some, some ideas about what might happen here. It's going to take forever. It will not. All right. So let's go with, Oh my gosh, hitting the wrong button here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let's go with, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> Innis Rake Straw. I just can't. <laughs> Innis Rake Straw. I like that one. Thank you. I was I, I'm trying to discombobulate you with my yeah. mayhem here, and then I come back and get you. So we need Emmanuel Forbes to play a million times better. So what do we do? We we, un, we draft another smallish corner. <laughs> <laughs> Rake Straw is going to be 190, I think. He'll be fine. All right. Ennis Rake Straw goes 36 to Washington. Next up, the LA Chargers at 37. They took Malik Neighbors at five, and maybe the steal of the draft. Rick, what are you doing? Uh, I am not going with another receiver. So, <laughs> it's something I would do. Yeah, I, I have to go the uh, corner here. Can you put the corners up? I know they got uh, Lass Lassiter up there. Is that it? We're uh, at seventy-seven. Yes. That's low. Yeah, give me last. Give me Lassiter. I have to take him. We need definitely need corner help. Big strong corner. We haven't talked about him in a while, but uh, yeah, I watched him the other day. Uh, liked his physicality. Uh, liked him when he plays press. Uh, he is a little leggy, uh, mirroring in man coverage when he's an off man, uh, everything's in front of him. He's really good. Uh, I think he's a little slow out of his transition and when he has to turn his hips and if he gets in a speed, but if he can get his hands on the receivers at the line of scrimmage to disrupt their release, he stays on top of him. He has good ball skills, good football player. I remember saying similar things in the fall and you just laughing in my face. Does that sound familiar? No. <laughs> All right. Next up, the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans, excuse me. Joe Alt was their first pick. Uh, they can certainly stand a wide receiver. Where are we on the wide receiver? We have Troy Franklin there. Who else do we have on the wide receivers, Debo? Okay, this is the done deal. Um, I should probably take Michael Penix Jr. and just send this right to Pete Briscoe, but I'm going to take Lad McConkey. Good player. But you want to add? What are you going to say? But what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's the best play. He's the best wide receiver of the team as, as we currently sit here. All right. Olaf Oshinu went number six. Rick, the Giants are back on the board. Okay. You ready for this one? I don't know if I am. I am going to go with Michael Penix Jr. I don't love I don't hate it. I actually like it a lot. So you're okay I with Michael Penix Jr. Out of round one? Is that what I'm hearing? Are you okay with him in round one? Yeah, I'm okay with him out of round one. Okay. I I actually like that a lot. Yeah, because you took J.J. McCarthy earlier, right? You did, not me. Don't put that on yeah. me. <laughs> you took him earlier. All right. That's that's. I, I wonder how Giants fans feel about that. I think they'll be okay with it. All right, Washington's back on the clock. I think their pick previously was from the Montez Sweat trade, and this is their own pick here, uh, or vice versa. Either way, they're back on the clock. Jaden Daniels. In his rake straw off the board. Uh, give me the offensive tackles, Debo, because we got to fix that. And there's going to be some guys here that I'm going to like. Uh, so Kieran Amadaji out of Yale is getting some buzz. I don't like him this high. I watched him, and it's sort of hard. Let me ask you quickly, Rick. When you watch like a, an FCS player against lesser competition, especially offensive tackle, going up against guys who are not going to be playing edge rush in the NFL anytime soon, how do you figure that out? Yeah, you try to project it, but this one's even a bigger projection because he had a quad injury in the fall. He only yep. played in the first four games, missed the rest of the season. That would have been a great uh, exposure for him down at the Senior Bowl, but wasn't able to do it. I don't know how significant the quad injury was, uh, but this guy has a lot of upside. He's just all over the place at, you know, uh, technically, but athletically is everything you want. He's just a major project that's going to take a couple of years. Right. Okay. That's that's sort of what I was thinking. I'm going to go with uh, Patrick Paul. 
offensive tackle out of Houston. He's going to Washington to help Jaden Daniels fulfill his destiny as the best player in this draft class. <laughs> Next up, Green Bay Packers. They had Nate Wiggins at 25. Rick, what are you doing at 41? Um, I can go offensive tackle here, and I'm going to go with uh, Kingsley. Uh, go ahead. Sumatia. You have the pronunciation guide. I didn't have it in front of me. Sumatia? <laughs> sure. We're going to have to get on that. that. That's a tough one. Uh, have you watched him yet? Yeah, I did. What do you, I, I, I don't I have a hard he, time with him. I know he, I think he's a better, better. Who's the player that, uh, was it Freeland that Carolina took that moved inside the guard? No, Blake Carolina. went to, uh, Indy and then wasn't Ezra Cleveland. You say Cleveland or, or Freeland? Freeland. Or who was the kid that kept the BYU left tackle? I thought that Carolina drafted. I think Blake was drafted. Uh, I'll double check. Um, a couple guys. Oh, you know what? Never mind. Uh, let me see who Blake Freeland was drafted by. You might be right. I like Blake Freeland. I thought he was a better athlete than than this kid. No? No, I like this kid. I, I okay. think he plays with a high pad level, but I think Yeah, he... Blake was drafted by the Colts. Okay. I thought okay. This, uh, yeah, uh, I thought the Car or the Carolina had a guy they drafted out of BYU that was uh maybe it was the Colts. I'll look that up for you, too. All right, the Minnesota Vikings are on the clock. You took Leatu Latu with number 11. And um, did you explain why you took him so high? I'm kidding. You said the, the medicals come back all clear. So I love it because I think he is uh, certainly top 15 talent. Um, I'm looking real quick to see. Yeah, there are no BYU guys. Oh, Brady, Brady Christensen is who you were thinking about. Yeah, I was thinking of Brady Christensen. Yep. All right. Mystery solved. Next up. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings. So what are we going to do after we take Latu Latu? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Do I want to take Here it comes. Do I Here take it Latu? comes. <laughs> you know what? I'm taking Bo Nix. Okay. <laughs> what do you think about Bo Nix at 42 to the Vikings? I love it. Are you just saying that or are you okay with it? I love it. I don't know what that means. <laughs> do you love it because you're in the NFC North or do you love it for the Vikings? I love it because you picked them. Okay, thank you. All right, next up, the Atlanta Falcons. I got Jared versus number eight. And now they're back on the clock. Hmm. This is a very interesting. I still got the edge rusher that I needed. Defense is okay. Uh, I am going to take... Hmm. Boy, this is a tough one. Give me the receivers. Give me Franklin. I'm going to go with Troy Franklin here. Why are you taking a re any receiver? Well, they got who else do they have besides London? They got Kyle Pitts and B. John Robinson. You you get all angry at me when I put too much money in one position. Yeah, I'm going to go. What's the second round? I'm going to go with the next okay. best playmaker on offense. All right. I'm about to blow your mind with this next pick. You took J.J. McCarthy 13th to the Vegas Raiders. Number 44, I'm getting edge help. I just watched this young man earlier in the week, and I love him. Number 68, Debo, Jonah Ellis out of Utah. Have you watched him yet, Rick? Uh, I've just watched glimpses of him. I got I want to. I have to do him yet. I want to hear what you think about him, because I was blown away with how good he is and why no one's – Why I'm sure people are talking about him, but, but we, we haven't talked more about him. So Jonah Ellis, edge rusher, I love the idea of him being opposite Max Crosby. So uh, we'll probably talk about him a lot next week once we get into the Combine. For now, though, Byron Murphy went 14th, the defensive lineman to the Saints, and you're up. Luther Ellis is that was Luther Ellis's one of his kids. He has like five or six of his kids playing in the NFL right now. They're all very good football players. Oh, I didn't know that. Is Caden Ellis a relation as well? Mm hmm. How about that? Look at that. Rick with the fun facts. Well done, Rick. So, okay, the uh, New Orleans Saints. Hmm. They went with, did you take this? Yeah, I you took know? Byron Murphy at 14. Yeah, that didn't make sense to me. I would have went more edge type. <laughs> they, uh, I'm going with Chris uh, Braswell here. That's a good pick. They need the edge, edge pass rusher. So Christian Braswell, uh, Brian Brzee, and Byron Murphy. I, I think that's a pretty good draft hole. All right, the Colts are up. Uh boy. I can't take a running back here. It's too soon. Uh 
Did Thank you know you. that they just signed Jonathan Taylor to an extension? You can never have too much depth, Rick. He's he was injured <laughs> for much of the season. <laughs> you know what? Uh, okay, no, no, take a running back here, please. Let's go. To, please take a I'm, running. Back. I'm going to take Tavondra Sweat. Okay. Defensive tackle. They need enormous tackle. defense. He's a second rounder, right? I, I feel comfortable there. Yeah. Yep, I'm good with that. All right, the Giants are up, and they have taken so far Olaf Ashenu and then Michael Penix Jr. in the second round. This is their second second round pick. What are you doing, Rick? I've got to go back to the defensive side of the ball. And, um, boy, he took my corners that I liked. Let me see the corners. They need to get someone opposite of Banks. They have uh, the rookie that started opposite him. You weren't crazy about him? Uh, he was okay. The okay. opposite of Banks was the rookie. Um, no, they had two rookies that started. The fifth round pick started too. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do with the safety. They're talking about, I think, transitioning um, the Alabama safety that they drafted. Xavier McKinney. So, you know what? I, I'm going to go Tyler Newbin here. Case I can't sign McKinney. Trey Hawkins was the the cornerback I couldn't remember at yep. ODU. All right. I like the Tyler Newbin pick. All right. Roma Dunze, 17th overall to the Jaguars, and they're picking again at 48. Hey, yay, yay. <laughs> I'm laughing about taking another receiver here. I won't do that. Um, I, I, I'm laughing. I see Edge, Edge Cooper's name. I would love to take another uh, linebacker. They love linebackers there. Let's look at the. Um, Cornerbacks, Debo. I think we're getting slim pickings into this group. Let's. All right. You know who I'm taking? And this may be too high. I don't care. I love this player. <laughs> what you like I always used to say that in the draft rooms. I don't care. I'm just. <laughs> don't worry well, about everything everybody said in the meetings. I just love this guy. I'm just going to take him. No, I, what I mean by this is that I think he's a really good football player. Um, and I, I think that the draft media may not be as high on him as I am, which would be shocking, but go ahead. Javon Bullard. Oh, a good football player. I Nickel like out of Nickel out of Georgia. Javon Bullard. Yeah. He's good. That's a good player. You would take him. The 48 feels might even, we might go high, higher than that. No, you don't think so. All right. I think it'll depend on how he runs. All right. Did you? What do you think? I thought he moved pretty well on tape. Do you not agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. No, he plays faster than probably he's going to time. He's a better okay. football player than he is as an athlete. All right. I can say that because I saw him struggle in one-on-ones at the senior bowl. But then when he got into the team periods, he was a much better football player in a team setting than yeah. in individual or one-on-one -on -one drills. All right. Um, Bengals up. Brock Bowers at 18 at 49. Any number of directions you could go. Yep. I am going to go receiver here. So if you can put up receiver. Oh, my gosh. You got, the game. you got, I don't know if you're going to uh, keep Higgins or not, if you franchise him or not. Um, but we're in our Super Bowl window. We need some more playmakers uh, to go along with Chase. We're in the second round. Um, I'm going to go with the best. Kind of, if I keep Higgins, let's say I franchise him to keep him one more year. I'm thinking Leggett here, but I'm going to reach a little oh, no. bit. And I really thought he had an outstanding senior bowl. I'm going to go with Roman Wilson from Michigan. Gosh, I love that pick. That's a great pick. That's a great pick, Rick. You might, you might amount to something one day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dang it to heck. All right. Cooper Jean went 22. Debo, what do you want next? More defense? Debo is like very impatient right now. I can hear him pounding on the glass. Yeah, he's got stuff to do. I want to see what Jason Kelsey decides. Uh, Zach Frazier, do you guys like him? I do like him better than Rick, I believe. Yes. Yes, made that's a couple, true. Uh, second round interior lineman picks the past couple of years. Dickerson worked out. Wait to see on Jurgens, but I'm open to re a receiver here. 
Oh, you are open to a receiver here. I, w- I would love to have gotten Roman Wilson, but some numbnut took him. So you know what I'll do? If you're open to a receiver, I'm going to take Jalen Polk. Ugh. <laughs> that was Rick, not Debo, in, uh, making the utter That disgusting. was Debo. <laughs> the thing is, you like Polk. It's so funny. You just don't like my picks. All right, the Steelers are up. They got Amarius Mims, the best pick of this draft, probably after the Malik Neighbors pick, in my opinion. They're up at 51. Uh, you can take Spencer Rattler here. <laughs> well, thank you. All right, what are we doing? They have needs uh, plenty of places. Uh, we have to get a corner. So go to the corner section. Is, uh, is TJ Tampa still available? He is. I haven't watched him yet. Have you watched him? Yeah, he's a good football player. He, he'll no. fit Tomlin's scheme. I'm going to go with uh, TJ Tampa. All right, give me give me the, the brief scouting report on him because I'm interested in seeing him. Big, physical corner, a uh, little bit tight, hipped. But he has some ball skills. Uh, he's willing in support. I think he just kind of fits a poor man's Joey Porter that we saw last year. Hey Amen. Sign me up for that. All right. Perfect. All right. Next up, the LA Rams. Jackson Powers Johnson, another great pick. Uh, I think if we're keeping score, Rick, you might be winning the, the draft pick battle, but whatever. Who cares? Uh, they're up again at 52. All right. What else do they need? They need. Uh, cornerback edge. Is this too early to draft a linebacker, you think, Rick? There's a linebacker I like in this class. But I am just a scout in the corner, just laughing at it as you go through this. <laughs> You're not joking about the laughing part. Uh, I don't. We don't need edge help, I don't think. Do we in the second round? Let me see the edges, Debo. I know that... Oh, okay. I know what I'm doing here. So we have Kobe Turner, the best player in the draft class last year that Rick will still refuse to acknowledge. They have Byron Young, great third-round pick. He balled out. Rick, I'm taking Marshawn Nealon here out of Western. Oh, wow. What do you think of that? Over Adisa Isaac, huh? I was looking at Adisa, but I think Marshawn has more upside. I could have gone with our guy that uh, you and Mike Renner love, Austin Booker here. Would you rather have Booker or, or Nealon? Rick's thinking in case you think you're... you're podcast yeah. that's stuck <laughs> yeah booker just to be opposite of you okay fair enough all right the eagles are back on the clock here so we have cooper jean jalen polk the wide receiver and then 53 what do you want to do to make Debo's dreams come true uh i am going to go with uh cameron kitchens they definitely need safety help that's a good uh, draft right there baby yeah byron you know i don't think they'll resign him they need they need to rebuild that secondary so they definitely have to go that route disrespectful to Sidney brown but that's okay i won't take it personally well he may he's be coming off play. an acl too oh that's right he tore his acl man is that okay debo am i good did i do good there thumbs up brick thank <laughs> you it makes me feel better i'll be able to go through the rest of my day with a smile on my face hey <laughs> <laughs> rick, rick rick took some gummies it sounds like <laughs> <laughs> all right let's see here let me ask you this, Debo. I mean, um, Rick is a scout in the corner. You're you're a neutral scout in the corner now. Would you rather have Xavier Leggett, Jermaine Burton, or Malachi Corley here if you're the Browns? Leggett. You think so? Okay, let's go Leggett. I I'm I could make cases for all two. I'm picking too. for you. I love this. I was leaning you know, Leggett. Now you're starting to like rely on a scout in the corner. I want to hear your. Don't ask me anymore. <laughs> Jesus. New rule, Debo. I'm New not rule. Thinking him i was leaning legat but i was interested in your thoughts i will not ask you another question all right <laughs> dolphins are up they took jc latham at 21 they're on the clock at 55 okay you're probably i can go tight end here easy i can yeah. go interior offensive line to keep building that offensive line um you know they're going to have to uh Probably franchise if it's is it Wilkins the, the Clemson kid. Yep. Uh, the defensive tackle they can't lose him. So let me go. Although I I do not like him as a blocker. I like that's him what you want to hear right before you draft him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like this pick by the way. Uh, you know what? I also can use definitely edge rusher help too. All right. I'm, is uh, is uh, Adisa Isaac still on the board? 
Give me yeah, him. Yeah. All right, Adisa Isaac. So Jatavion Sanders, you just hung up the phone on him. He's mad at you now. Yep. All right. So we have Fatanu for the Dallas Cowboys at 24. Now we're back on the clock. Oh boy, let's see here. Let's let's get some defensive help. Let's go with Kalen Bullock out of Southern Cal. He needs to tackle a little better, gain some weight, but he's a sideline to sideline guy. Great ball skills. Rick is shaking his head. That's okay. We'll see he's laughing when he has eight interceptions as a rookie. <laughs> All right, Rick. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Keon Coleman was your pick in the first round, the wide receiver. You're up at 57. That was your pick, right? My pick, sorry. You're welcome. <laughs> Boy, you got me a little stuck here, bud. Because, uh, huh? You can take Spencer Rattler. <laughs> <laughs> when you're stuck, take Spencer. Uh, let me go. I, I could go offensive line here very easy. You know what I'm going to do? What? Give me uh, the Yale kid. Oh, uh, and, my uh, goodness. Let me, try to, let me try to develop him in Jeez. Tampa. With the understanding, the uh, the left tackle out of Yale. With the understanding that he's not playing in year one, correct? Yeah, he's going to be time to develop. But okay. they took the mock. They, you know. So I'm, I'm going to go with uh, – the, you know, they got worse on the right side. They can definitely use left tackle help. I know he may not be ready, but has a tremendous upside. I got to go with him. Okay. All right. I like it. All right. I'm going to double check here real quick. But the next up are the Packers. We took Nate Wiggins, the cornerback, in round one. Kingsley Sumatei. Uh, hopefully I got that right, Kingsley. The offensive lineman at BYU in round two. And Debo, I think what we're going to do in round three is I double check. I think we're going to go defense because uh, we need to help that side of the ball. Joe Barry, I believe, is now gone. Um, Jeff Halfley is now the defensive coordinator. I'm going to go edge, Debo. I'm going to go Austin Booker out of Kansas. Wow. Reach. <laughs> He's yelling in the draft room. He reached. He, he reached. All right. Uh, Mike Renner has him top 50 guy. Had him going 58. That's a, that's a bargain. Mm-hmm. The Houston Texans are up. You took Brian Thomas Jr. in the first round. Great pick. What are you doing around yep. two? Yep. I have to go back to the defensive side of the ball. Um, I could definitely use some edge. I could use a corner. I can use a defensive tackle. Let me see edge just to see if there's any partners for uh, Will Anderson. Oh, I got the guy. Who are you taking? Brandon Dorless, who He's has. A good player. He, he is a very good player. He's got the ways to go on some things, mature-wise, but hmm, he can okay. play inside. He can rush the passer. Uh, he is, if you can get him going, he's going to be a really good player in the league. All right. Yeah, absolutely. And he he uh, he looks the part already. It's not like he needs to gain any weight. He's, he's built like a uh, whatever. He's built like getting off the bus, what you want to look like. Chop Robinson was the first-round pick. For the Bills, let's go to the wide receivers, Debo. So Bills fans will shut up about the wide receivers. Um, oh boy, I should take Rick's guy, Ricky Pierce, all here, but I'm not. I'm gonna take Malachi Corley. Okay, gadget guy. That's perfect. That's what they need. He's not a gadget guy. <laughs> How dare you? They threw him the ball. They threw quick screens to him because they wanted to get the ball in his hands. He ran. He ran some better routes at the Senior Bowl, or uh, a bigger route tree at the Senior Bowl, I should say. I like him. All right, Lions are up. Braylon Trice. Edge rushed opposite Aiden Hutchinson in round one. Now they're back on the clock. Go interior offensive line. Let me look at that. No, please. No, nothing. Just yelling at Debo. Okay. They definitely need guard help. Um, Big V has been hurt a lot. Glasgow, I believe, is out of contract. So is uh, Jonah. So tough call here. Give me Cooper BB. For this one that's a good pick that is a good pick rick whether you like it or not i like cooper all right the ravens are up um hit the cornerback button debo i may go into your defensive line here because we don't know what's going to happen with justin matt bk uh boy i love me some maki sanders still can you scroll down a little bit past kalen carson 
Chris Abrams strains there. DJ James is a good player. Max Melton's a good player. All right, I'm going to go defensive line, and I'm going to take Dwayne Carter out of Duke. Uh, okay. Oh, good. Right. Rick's like that. And by the way, uh, Michael Hall is not a bad option here. Every time I watch these Big Ten offensive linemen, Michael Hall is just destroying guys with that little twitchy swim-over move at the snap. All right, 49ers are up. They took Tyler Guyton in round one, offensive line. Next to last pick of the second round, Rick. Okay. Uh, I like this kid's upside. I think that he is needs some time to develop, but you can't teach the athleticism. They need interior defensive line help, I think, in a rotation early. So I'm going to go with, is it Rook Aroro? Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll give you credit for that. That's a tough one. <laughs> uh, the kid out of Clemson. Yeah, he's a good player. All right, the last pick of the second round. Some idiot took Graham Barton in the first round. <laughs> oh, boy. So next up, uh, let's see. Give me some wide receiver help. Debo, let's see where we are with that because that clearly was a – oh, boy. I'm not taking – You want to take Zach Frazier here? I think they could add another guard. <laughs> Debo piling on. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Rick? What are you laughing at? All right, and then go to the main screen. I, I'm deciding between one of the wide receivers I like, and then we're going to see. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. What do you think about Jatavian Sanders here, Rick? You're not going to answer that question? I'm not answering that question. They have so many tight ends. They don't need another tight end. And I, I think uh, at least one of them, maybe Blake Bell's up. Uh, all right, I'm going to go. Oh, man. All right, I'm doing it. I'm taking Jermaine Burton, wide receiver at Alabama. It's a good pick. I like him. I think this is right around the range. You can go off the board. And, you know, the quarterback situation was was problematic for a while there, but it came came around towards the end. And I think he was a he's a play better than, than folks expected. And certainly played better than he did in 2022. I think you agree with that, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. That's it. The two rounds in a book. Got it in under an hour. Debo can go make his meeting uh, as he prepares to join people in holy matrimony in a few days. So that's it. That's a wrap. Next week we'll be coming to hey, Nebo, did you marry anyone out in Vegas while you had some spare time <laughs> out there? I know that's a place where people on the street, you can just put a little stand out there, a CBS podcast stand that marries people. That'd have been great. You could say, oh, yeah, I, I am the owner of With the First Pick. And <laughs> oh, God. I don't want to uh, incriminate any of my co coworkers. <laughs> so uh, I plead the fifth on that. There you go. All right. That's it. Thanks to my guy, Rick. Thanks to Debo for producing. Thanks to you guys who watch and listen. We'll be back next week from Indianapolis at the Combine, Tuesday through Friday, every single day. So we'll see you guys next week.